after the band, I continued to go down that line pretty much up until today. I love to co-write. Mm. Um, but it's funny that this last year I've actually gone back to writing on my own a lot again. Have you enjoyed it? I have enjoyed it. It's been, um, it's been different. I've, I've come from a different, I'm a different writer than the one I was writing in the 90s. Good. How do you think? Um, I think I have a really good knowledge of songwriting these days. Um, I, I, I've stopped the sort of dissecting things and really f I can follow my heart more than I ever used to. So when you sit down at the keyboard or at the piano, you can, your hands will follow this as opposed to this. Yeah, I think so. I, I was more, I was more, um, I don't know, it, 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 in the 90s it, it felt so preset and programmed what I was doing because it had to be done fast and it, and, and, and remember that you know we were a, a we were a boy band so the area you're writing in is about this big you know explain you, that you, because people will be sitting here watching this now going okay what do you mean by you're confined on the keyboard by this amount of keys or notes in order to reach a, a broader selection of people well if you think about um, the pop music that was around in the 90s it's very simple um, very few chords. That's all this, wasn't it? There's a lot of that. Yeah, I was constantly trying to break out of that. Yeah. But I was, you know, you've got to remember then that I was like 21, 22, and I was answerable to people as well. You know, I had a label who, who wanted a certain thing and they'd mm. say, try one of these now. And so I was working for people. I don't anymore. Mm -hmm. I, I don't. When I say something's good now, mm. or when a, our band says something's good, it's good. And, and, I, and, and I don't want that to sound like I'm a know-it-all, but... I think you've got the right to know, I, I know. a few things here I, and there. I, I do know. I know when things are good. So how do you make a keyboard work in that, in that parameter? How would you, I mean, when you're writing songs in this kind of specific area not, and avoiding the high notes and the low notes? Um, it's more, when I, when I describe this, mm. I'm, I'm meaning more as a... You know, oh, you can't go too, not too many minor chords, mm, you know. Mm. It's those sort of confinements which mm. I don't have anymore. Mm. Um, I've, got a, I've got a full length keyboard these days. As, as, as then, I was working to guidelines and we were working to accompany our image and it was more of a package then. Yeah. A, 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 a package that was being sold. Yeah. As, 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 you know, as this time round, I don't know, it just feels a little bit more bespoke. Mm, definitely. Um, arguably, the biggest hit that you had throughout the first stage of your career and Take That, before your solo career, was Back For Good. Mm -hmm. um, and as a piece of music, that has, I mean, that's travelled through people's lives mm -hmm. and continues to. Um, people watching this will want to know sort of the origins of that, how that began, what the original feel for that was when you wrote that song. Um, I, I, I actually, the chords started from, um, what's that Commodore song? Easy. Because I'm easy, oh, actually that's a different, oh, it's slightly different, but, yeah. but it's basically just that, Back For Good is, it's four chords, and it was, it was that period where I was starting to explore with my voice a little bit more, and I was starting to sing a lot more falsetto mm. than I'd ever sang before. Mm. And I wanted to get a song in that the chorus didn't go, yeah, yeah, you know, that big note. I thought, let's go into falsetto for the mm. chorus. And that's when whatever I said mm. <clears throat> went high at the beginning of the, the chorus line. And it really felt like the, the, the demo was so convincing. It was like the best demo I'd ever done, really. <laughs> and it was so convincing that I just played it to everyone. And they were just like, wow, it's this, done. Is, this is amazing. Mm. Uh, and, and it was our first single from a record, and it, it doesn't sound like a first single from a record. Mm, it sounds you, like a third single. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but the fact that everyone was responding to it so well, it just felt like, well, this is a great area for us, because it's oh. not boy band all Exactly. It was a very kind of established, mature, classic pop song. It's the kind of thing that you, I'm sure Elton John would have been proud to write, mm -hmm. and for the first time, you, it wasn't about the package, was it? It no. showed a depth to take that. It showed, yeah. Well, it showed a depth to your writing. Yeah, and the success came accordingly. All of a sudden, you were established as more than just the chief writer for a boy band traveling the world, dancing on a stage. You were actually like this guy's a contender. He's an Ivan Novello winner. Mm -hmm. It must have felt good. It was nice. It's nice to see because at last I felt like it was a song I could play to everybody. 
all my friends. Hmm. As in the past, I'd had music which I thought was all right, but there's a there's a lot there's lots of our albums then I wouldn't have played hmm. proudly to everybody, as this was going to an area where this I felt most comfortable. Hmm. This was in that Neil Diamond, it's a classic Elton song. John, Absolutely. Billy Joel. Th this was in an area I could see myself working towards. Then, obviously, things and take that came to a grounding, grinding halt. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we're not going to go. We're not here to talk about the demise of take that in the, in the in the first round. But what I'm interested to talk about is, in the days, weeks, months, years following, you know, take that separation. Mm -hmm. You you released solo albums. Mm -hmm. Did you find that freeing? Was that an enjoyable process being on your own? The um, the interesting time for me was how much America was starting to influence me. Because we'd had a hit there with Back For Good. Mm. And um, it was one of those crazy situations that about four months after we'd had a number three record there, the band split up. And so, <laughs> typical. Hello. Um, and the so, verb were taking notes, by the way. Right. The verb were taking notes. Right, right, right. <laughs> um, so at that point, the guy that had signed as Clive Davis was looking to me as... Uh, it, it was an odd thing because... When Back For Good was out, he never wanted the band in America. He never thought the image of the band matched the song. And so when we eventually went there and did Letterman, he was like at the styling meetings and everything, you know, he really wanted us to not look like a boy band. Yeah. Um, and so when the news of the band splitting up came, it didn't bother him that much. He was like, well, I'll sign Gary straight away. I want yeah. a songwriter. Yeah. Um, and so... That was exciting for me because I thought, okay, so it's not just going to be releasing albums in England. Mm. That this is going to be interesting. It's Clive Davis has the magic touch. This oh. guy is a legend. You well, know? I'd heard a lot about him, and I was a bit like, okay, wow, I'm dealing with massive power here now. Mm. And so, um, the the downside of that was he really tried to change me. He really tried to. Um, make me co-write with people I wasn't crazy about co-writing, pushed me towards an area of music I was trying to get away from. And um, and it was one of those classic situations that in the end, after all of it, I ended up with no confidence as a songwriter. Mm. And it's like taking the confidence away from the Premiership winners. There's no team left. You know, when a football team doesn't have confidence, they don't play properly, yeah. the look doesn't come your way. You know, it's it's the, exactly the same as 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 a creative person to not have confidence, go home, you know, take a year off because you're not going to come up with anything with no confidence. You can't force it. It's all about, you know, our job. Ninety nine percent of the time is going. Is that any good? I, know. I mean, the so totally your heart's on your sleeve. You're trying to say to people, you know, you, you're looking round the room. Is this good? You know, it, that's what our job is, you know. So doing that as someone with all your confidence strip, t take 10 years off. Well, you just take, you know, you had the wrong father figure for that point in your life. And that's what all artists need. That's why they sign these ridiculous record deals and throughout history for you know, little or no money whatsoever, because they want someone to tell them that they're good. Yeah. yeah. That's what it comes yeah. down to. Yeah. You're very good. Yeah. Here's a car. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Have yeah. all my songs. Just yeah. tell me I'm good sporadically yeah. over the course of my life. I um, know, it's crazy, isn't it's it? It's bizarre, isn't it? Yeah. It's bizarre. Did you, well, I know you did because we spoke about this off camera, so, you know, I'd, if you could share this with the people watching, um, you know, you, you have experienced writer's block. It does exist. It definitely exists. Um, I don't know if it was writer's block because I could come up with stuff that was just rubbish. Um, <laughs> Which in, it technically is writing. And I've had a good, <laughs> yeah, I've had a good ear always for if something comes on the radio I haven't heard before, I'll go, wow that's big mm. and that's not going to do much i'm really good at that and my intuition's good with with new music in a similar way that i have a certain place and oh, no, i leave that I, I know straight away and mm. i knew not nothing i was coming up with was any good um and so here we are in a new stage of life and you've you've, you've lost most of your tool bag you know most of what you do the big part of you um, it's gone, it's, it's evaporated. And so you question, is it gonna come back? Mm. What's next? I'm 25, what am I gonna do for the rest of my life? I'm not even qualified to work a till at Tesco's. 
I've got no qualifications at all. Mm. All I'm qualified in is music. And I've that's lost my job. That's not fair at 25. That's not it's something you should feel you, know, you should go through, really. Certainly at that age, I think, you know, is to be. But that's this industry. Mm. You know, this is, this is the privileged position we have. Mm. And, um, and when, when your time's up, it's where's the next one? So what did you do? You wrote for other people? Yeah, I did a mixture of stuff. I went to live in LA for a year, which was great mm. because ignoring music for a second, I was doing stuff in LA I hadn't done for 10 years, like going into a supermarket, walking around it. Wow. Can you wow. live some life? Look at, look at all the brands of toothpaste. <laughs> what? This is unbelievable. Especially I mean, in America, they love cleaning their teeth out there. <laughs> LA. I mean, seriously. <laughs> That's right. Amazing. <laughs> That's funny because I had my teeth whitened while I was there. Figured you did. There you go. Figured there you did. You go. I wouldn't get very far in LA, you see. Too much coffee in my life. Right, too much coffee. Right. But I had a year of getting my life back. Mm. Getting my life back. My son had just been born. I watched him cough and sneeze and walk and for the first time. I did all of that. Beautiful. What a blessing. This is the material that's going to yeah. you know, inform your writing. I wish I'd have known then yeah, what yeah. was coming ahead because yeah. I'd have enjoyed those years more because... Maybe maybe you wouldn't have taken as much in if you'd known that it was just a hiatus from where you needed maybe, to be again. Maybe, maybe. But, but for sure, I was, I was learning. Mm. I was learning every day at that point. So when did the confidence for you as a writer go from, OK, this is my trade, I'll write for this person, I'll write for that person, let's keep some bread on the table, let's keep the fridge full, let's just stay in the game, keep our feet under the table, mm -hmm. weather this. When did that confidence in you as a writer and the idea of getting the boys back together and, you know, that transition from the wilderness, which I think it's safe to call it, as far mm -hmm. as most people are concerned, <clears throat> to being back in the public eye and writing songs again? I had four years um, from 2000, four and a half years of, of just sort of being a jobbing songwriter, writing to briefs, taking A&R meetings. Was that easy um, for you? Writing for, you know, I suppose it was, Working Men's Club again in a way. You know what? It was fine. Mm. It was fine. There's a part of me that... I don't know. It's an area of the industry which exists. But one, I have... I don't know. I don't know the answer to that one. Mm. Because unless you've got a voice like Shirley Bassey or just being a singer, I don't know. It's not enough for people anymore. It's not enough for me. Mm. Um, you know, unless you're a Leona Lewis or... I need more from artists these days. You know, mu mu music's hard to, to get people interested. You know, that, that's why we've watched the decline. Mm, mm. I don't know if it's downloads or whatever else. I just think there's more interesting stuff out there now to, to grasp people. So, mm. so when you're an artist and you are going to get a fan base and an audience, you've got to be good. You know, that's, that's, that's the sort of general common denominator you've got to be good mm. and I think you've got to say something and you've got to be someone to, to make people intrigued so I think the days of just being a singer and have people writing songs for you I kind of less believe in that and I guess it came a little bit from those days of me writing for someone mm. getting them to sing it and I was just never quite satisfied with it I always used to think this is a bit of a cheat, this is. <laughs> this is a bit of a cheat. And so when the band thing came round, after doing that for four years, I thought, oh, you know, input. This feels good. Input into something real. And the again. songs came out and they were, I mean, they're outrageous. I mean, the, the output that you and your friends and Take That have had, and all of them as well contributing here and there. Mark's written mm -hmm. some real classics. You know, confidence again. Just You just, once the people voted in you again, mm -hmm. voted, you know, gave you that confidence. I mean, patience, for instance, and let's talk about that. I mean, what a first statement to make upon your return. Have a little patience. I mm -hmm. mean, so much about that song speaks to people, speaks to you, your story. Talk us through patience and how that one came about. Yeah, patience we wrote with, um, we, we got a partner quite early on our first record, John Shanks, <clears throat> amazing guitarist. So he would sit in the studio doing these lines and things which you can't even imagine. Great chord runs. Mm. Things is, there's a, there's a big split between a pianist and a guitarist. Now, I don't play guitar. I understand it. I can tell a guitarist what I want to hear, but I can't play. Mm. And guitarists 